Real estate investing can be quite profitable if you do it right. The more efficiently you manage your investment property, the better your returns will look. Let's look at how you can maximize the return on your real estate investment. What's up everyone? My name is Joris. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will assume that you have already invested in real estate and now you are looking to increase your return from that asset. In current times, with ultra low interest rates, real estate is very popular amongst investors. This drives up all the prices. But still, if you look well, a lot of potential return is still there to be found. Let's look at several aspects that can make or kill your return. The first one being the vacancy. A property that is not rented out is obviously not generating any cash and it's not earning you any money. It is very important that you rent out the property as long as possible and as often as possible so there are no problems with the vacancy. In my experience, to increase this efficiency, you have to know the markets of renters. Take a good look at your property and ask yourself what kind of people will rent out such a place. Do you have a single bedroom apartment? Well, then your target audience would be singles or a couple without kids. Do you have a large apartment with three or more bedrooms? You will be able to cater to bigger families. The asking price for your rent should be competitive, not too high so vacancies will be common and not too low to make sure your return is good, as good as it could be. I find it easiest to look around on real estate broker sites and look at comparable properties. I look at the amount of bedrooms, the degree of finish of the property and the square meters. Then I look at the renting price and I set my renting price according to the average prices in the neighborhood. When you have found a good asking price, it is also equally important to market your property well. Don't use any free site to promote your property, but use a paid one. It will most likely target a lot more potential renters, so you can discuss rents with more potentials. Of course, the location of your property will also have a great influence on your asking price. But this is something you need to consider when buying the place, not per se when renting it out. You can't fix it then. If you still find it hard to rent out the place, consider being more flexible on the renting price. It's better to have rented out the place for a slightly lower price than to have it vacant for too long. But don't overdo this, because in some cases it might be better just to wait a few months for new renters to arrive and you can ask more. That would be better than accepting a lower rent every month. In the long term, the latter will hurt you financially. The next thing you need to do is to make sure your renting price keeps up with inflation. Your wage increases every year and so do your costs of living. So, as a landlord, you can raise the rent every year according to the housing index to make sure your incoming rent keeps its value every year. Oddly enough, only 5% of landlords raise their renting price every year. Maybe they are afraid of losing their renters? I don't know. I think it is important to do so, but also to have a good relationship with your renters. If they know they can ask you anything, they won't be offended when you raise their rent. This way, your rental income re increases 1-2% to each year, but your mortgage payments remain the same. So more income and less output equals more cash flow every year. Another reason to really make sure you raise your rents when possible. Tip number three is using the financial leverage you have available to you. If you are buying a house all cash, you'd have to be very lucky to have a net return of 25 to 3.5% yearly. But by using leverage, by using a mortgage and by using the money of the bank as a leverage, you won't have to pay as much in front and your renters pay off part or even a whole of your mortgage. You can lend money nowadays for less than 1.5% yearly. So if your property earns you more than that, you are making profit. In some cases, it can be more advantageous to put less of your own money up front and lend more from the bank to boost your return on investment. Speak to your financial advisor about this when buying real estate. Don't overpay on your real estate. This one is crucial. Paying too much on your investment property will slash your returns. Do your due diligence. Make sure you know the value of the property you are bidding on. And don't pay more than you should. 
Having a maximum price in mind when negotiating is needed, so you don't go over that price, even though it looks like a great deal. Paying just a few thousand euros more might not seem that much of a difference, but it will lower your return drastically. For example, if you find a property priced at 200,000 euros, earning 10,000 euros a year, that's a 5% net return. But if you buy it over value at, let's say, 250,000 euros, your rental income won't rise at all and it stays at the 10,000 euros yearly. So your yearly return is lowered to 4%. 1% doesn't seem that much of a difference, but it will definitely add up over time. It should really be a reason why you decline a deal. Don't believe the fairy tales that project managers are offering you. Investing in a new apartment building, a 6% net return is guaranteed, and we make sure that it's rented out for the next 10 years. I have dissected some of those offers before, and the way they calculate returns is very vague, it's often overvalued and sometimes completely wrong. Don't let them sway you with nice looking returns and promises. There is no free lunch and people making money on you buying their properties will definitely not serve you this free lunch. So do your own calculations. Newly built real estate is often not worth it. The returns are substantially lower than existing buildings, let alone the taxes on them. And the promise of not having any problems with the buildings in the next 10 years is not solid either. I know a great deal of people who have bought newly built apartments where the cellar flooded due to a burst pipe and moldy walls be uh, became visible because of bad plumbing within a few months or years after completing the build. Renovate older real estate. Older real estate can be found in city centers, so it is a prime location for real estate. If you then spend some money and time fixing up those real estate places, those properties, you can give your rental income a big boost. But do note that normal upkeep does not have any effect on the renting price. But simply making the property better, like putting in a new terrace, a whole new bathroom or kitchen, that gives you the option to raise rents. Older buildings will also have a slightly higher cost in upkeep, but I find newer buildings to be priced higher and thus less interesting, at least compared to the existing real estate. Keep your real estate in good condition. This is a no-brainer. If you yearly spend a little on upkeep, you can prevent major costs for a property that is falling apart. It is better to clean your piping once every year than to completely renew the piping every few years because they are cluttered or broken. A lot of the daily use repairs also are supposed to be fixed by the renter. Examples here are changing the light bulbs, cleaning the gutters and so on. It's important to have a good contract with your renters where the state of the apartment is described into detail. If things are broken when the renter leaves, there is no discussion as to whom has to pay for it. Another great tip is to use the fiscal laws into your advantage. Even though rental income is not taxed in Belgium yet, there are several options to get tax deductions on your mortgages, on your renovations, on installing a sun boiler on, and so on. Do your homework, talk to accountants in your neighborhood and find out what deductions are applicable for your situation. Using these fiscal opportunities can have a big impact on your taxes and indirectly on the return of your real estate. Just do it yourself, man. The more you do yourself, the less you have to spend on others. Don't hire contractors to fix something easy. Just get your hands dirty and do it yourself. Don't use a management firm to manage your building. Do it yourself. It's very easy to do the bookkeeping of a few apartments, so why would you spend money on someone else doing it instead? If your property is vacant, organize the sightings with potential renters yourself. A broker will often ask one month's rent to find new renters. That is a lot of money. If you have the time, you can also choose to rent your property in a pr more profitable way by using short-term rental, like Airbnb. This can boost your income greatly. But of course, you will have to spend more time managing the visitors and cleaning up afterwards. I hosted Airbnb for a while and it was very profitable. You can watch this video if you want to know more about how I did it. And if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and to subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. Also hit the notification bell to be notified when a new video comes out. I recently got a lot of new viewers and subscribers so thank you very much for that. I really hope that you get the information out of my videos that you want and that you need. If you want to know more about a certain subject, 
please let me know down in the comments below and I will try to answer them as much as possible. I read them all, I try to comment as much as I can and if it's a subject that is too complicated to write down, I might even make a video about it. On my channel I explain my journey to financial freedom. I talk about all my successes and most importantly about all my failures. You can learn from me and achieve your financial freedom for yourself. Good luck and I will see you soon.